Hi, Chris Baston, clinical psychologist here, talking to you today about avoiding common unhealthy food traps when we're stuck at home. Um, if you're spending more time than usual at home, you will have already discovered the various ways that this environment can affect our day-to-day -day life, our physical health and our mental health. And one of the parts of our life that spans the physical and the mental health aspects is our eating. Now here are some common traps to look out for and I've got some tips for you on how to avoid all three of them. Trap number one, we lose our routine. So the problem is that we tend to have different times for going to bed, for getting up in the morning, for um, doing our usual activities. When we have school, uni, work, um, we um, uh, are required by the demands of our day to get up at a certain time and do certain things. We're expected to be somewhere. When we're at home, um, we lose that. So the solution is to prioritise routine, to respect how helpful and important that is, and to plan ahead. The planning around meals um, includes deciding what you'll eat well ahead and shopping accordingly. We can then plan for what we're going to eat each day and we know what we're going to eat, eat each day. We want to avoid the trap, for instance, of getting to 1.30 in the afternoon and then wondering, hmm, what am I going to have for lunch? And then we're tempted to grab something quick or unhealthy um, or maybe something that actually resembles just a big snack rather than a proper meal. Um, the problem is then we're going to get hungry and then you know have about two or three afternoon teas and so on. So a good day of eating should have a discrete pattern of breakfast, lunch, dinner and appropriate snacks in between. We want to make sure that each snack is substantial enough so that we don't end up getting too hungry or feeling like we're missing out on nice foods. Um, and as this can just lead to a sort of a grazing pattern throughout the day. So plan ahead, respect the health benefits of a routine. Trap number two, emotional comfort eating. It's very common for any of us actually to turn to food in response to negative emotions. Um, and there's plenty of negative emotions at the moment. Negative emotions that can trigger eating are varied. It depends um, on each person. It could include boredom, frustration, irritation, worry and uncertainty. Now the truth is that eating often does make us feel a bit better. However, those benefits do not always last very long at all. Perhaps seconds or minutes and the negative consequences last a lot longer. Think about things like we feel tired afterwards and bloated, physical discomfort, maybe some regret hangs around in our mind and distracts us. So if the problem is comfort eating, what is the solution? I recommend that people plan ahead um, and start to make a mental note of the various emotions throughout the day that might trigger our eating. And then try to get into the habit of having one word labels for all of our emotions. So when we do that, it trains us to be the detached observer and we're likely to catch our emotions, not just react to our emotions. Um, when you know what your high risk emotions are, then you can make a list for yourself of your top two or three, keep it nice and short and simple, top two or three strategies that you believe that you can use that are going to actually meet your emotional needs through emotional means and not food. Picture yourself doing that. Visual rehearsal increases the likelihood that we will produce the behaviour that we want to in the future. The third and final trap to watch out for is that our meal environment has changed. The nature of the problem Go, might go like this. When we're out of our usual pattern of a healthy eating routine and a daily routine, we might find ourselves eating on our own more often, or perhaps not eating at a table as easily as we used to. And I like the term meal hygiene here. 
You probably have heard the term sleep hygiene. We've got a tip sheet on that too. Um, meal hygiene refers to having a discreet and healthy um, pattern of meals, as per the first point above. But it also refers to the way that we eat each meal or snack. A number of problems arise when we don't sit down and eat from a plate at a table. These include being distracted, not fully enjoying our food, eating too fast or perhaps even too slow if we're distracted. And you know, our food choices might be far from ideal when we're just um, standing up at a bench or grabbing something and, um, you know, eating uh, while we're um, in a quick break in between tasks on our computer. So the solution, we call it plate up and sit down. Fairly self-explanatory. We should aim with every meal and snack to choose consciously what we eat and to serve it to ourselves as if we were serving it to a friend that we were hosting at our house. Um, and we wanted them to enjoy the right amount of food and it should look nice on a plate um, and then sit down and we'll eat it mindfully. When I say mindfully, that is we bring our awareness to each mouthful, noticing the flavour and the texture as we chew and swallow. And eating this way means that we enjoy the food more. We register when we're full more accurately and we're less likely to feel hungry within the next hour or two. It's also just a nice cognitive break from having a head in our work or in our device. Um, and that's all about eating mindfully. We can also think about the motto of plate up and sit down. Now a nice final additional tip here for you to boost this strategy is to try to connect with a friend or a colleague for every lunch time or maybe every morning tea time, especially if you're just working alone from home. That way you get to chat. There's also a degree of accountability for each other in terms of taking a break and actually from your work, structuring your meals and eating um, nice food and healthy food. So those are my tips for healthy eating. If you'd like to know more about managing anxiety and how to um, look after yourself as best you can, have a look at some of the resources on the website, um, www.bastonpsychology.com.au and you can also feel free to contact one of our psychologists for a face-to-face -face or an online consultation, whatever suits you.